like to take a moment and welcome you to the University of Delaware Soil Testing Program. We're a public service lab here in the College of Ag and Natural Resources at the University of Delaware, and we provide soil testing and other analytical services to the general public as well as support for the university faculty, staff, and researchers. We do about 20,000 samples a year. About 5,000 of those are soil samples, such as the ones you see on the counter. Um, when you have your sample that you've taken in your yard and you send it into the university, this is where it's going to get delivered. You may drop it off at a post office or a cooperative extension office, and either way, it's going to make its way here. Our routine test is going to give you your pH, your lime requirement, your organic matter, and 11 different nutrients that are important to plant growth. After we finish your results, we're going to generate a lime and a nutrient recommendation that will explain to you exactly what to put on your garden or your lawn, and then how much to do it, when to do it, and the proper way to apply it. working days after we receive your sample, you'll get a report from us in the mail. That report is going to include a copy that looks like this, which explains your results, and also assess soil test notes related to the plants that you're trying to grow, which give you additional information beyond the soil test report. Let's take a minute and look at what a soil test report tells you. The soil test report is basically designed, divided into three areas. The first part tells us the background information about your sample. That's the information that you sent us on your information sheet. The middle part shows us what your soil test results were that were measured here in the lab. And the bottom part, which is your suggested fertilizer program, tells you how much lime and nutrients you need to add to get the growth of your plants that you're trying to achieve. well it's growing? Is it disease resistant? Does it have a good green color? Does it respond well um, to traffic and things like that? When we try and apply our nutrients then, we're going to try and move you into the optimum range, but avoid moving you into the excessive range. In the case of phosphorus, we do try and keep you down below the excessive range. Phosphorus is not a health problem particularly, it's more of a problem when it runs off into streams of waterways. Here in Delaware, we have problems with eutrophication, which means those algal blooms, that scummy mess that grows in the creeks and ponds when we get runoff into it. By keeping your soil test in this optimum range, you're going to get good growth of your plants, at the same time avoiding causing problems with your environment. This lower band down here, which includes boron, manganese, zinc, and sulfur, is a measure of those micronutrients. If all these nutrients are in a good place, then we get really concerned about the micronutrients. However, if your micronutrients are very out of balance, then we may give you a recommendation down here to do a correction. And usually that's for certain specific plants. In most cases in Delaware soils, we've got more than enough micronutrients available. But occasionally, in the southern part of the state where the soils are very sandy, we may get some zinc or manganese deficiency. Or if you've got acid-loving shrubs like azaleas and rhododendrons and you get that pH up too high, you may see iron deficiency. So when you get a yellow cast to the plant, and in which case we may give you an iron recommendation to correct that problem. This bottom part of your report is where we give you that suggested fertilizer program. It's usually going to include a lime recommendation if your soil needs lime, and then some fertilizer guidelines. The fertilizer guidelines are designed to A, supply the amount of nitrogen that plant is going to need for the season, and then to correct any phosphorus and potassium issues that are showing up on your soil test. In the case of a turf grass, it's very possible that if you're in the optimum range, your fertilizer recommendation is going to specify no phosphorus, and today you actually can find many no phosphorus fertilizers in the market. test should be 
done on your Delaware soil at a minimum every three years. Occasionally, if you've had a problem develop, if it's a new home site, if you've had a high recommendation, say for lime because your pH was very out of the target range, you may want to soil sample a little more frequently. Also, if you're noticing problems in your lawn or your garden, you can send in a troubleshooter and we'll help you diagnose what's going on. Soil tests can be purchased here at the University of Delaware, either at our soil testing program office in Townsend Hall or at any of your cooperative extension offices throughout the state. We're also making soil tests available at a number of locations throughout the state at garden centers and such, and those locations will be noted shortly on our website. You can order soil test kits over the mail or by checking on our website. We accept cash checks and credit cards and are happy to send them out to you through the mail to save you a trip to one of the county offices. At the garden centers, you're likely to see one of our mailer kits. It's a kit that includes the how-to brochure, directions on payment, a sample information sheet, a sample guideline on how to pull an appropriate sample, and the soil test kit. You can then just take your sample, complete the information sheet, and send the sample back with payment to the university through the mail, FedEx, or any other delivery service. Or you can just drop it in one of the cooperative extension drop boxes. A standard soil test costs $10, and gives you all the tests that we've talked about so far. If you're having problems, we also offer a soluble salts test, which can help, which can help to diagnose those causing your problem. For people living in an urban area or where they suspect there may be lead contamination and they don't want their children exposed, you can easily have a lead test done as well, either on the same sample or on an additional sample. That test costs an additional $10. If you're doing a lead test, please be sure to note lead tests required on the outside of the envelope as they get special handling when they're received. If you have any other questions, feel free to check our website. Mm -hmm.